the Air Force flew a pair of strategic bombers over the South China Sea, marking the second time it has sent the nuclear-capable aircraft to the region in just over a week. Two B-52H Strata Fortress bombers took off from Anderson Air Force Base Guam and conducted routine training in the vicinity of the South China Sea. Last week, one B-52 flew over the South China Sea while another circumnavigated Japan in a joint military exercise with the Japan Air Self-Defense Force, the CAF said at the time. That mission was the first reported B-52 flight over the South China Sea since November, however, not all are made public. In the past, Beijing has deemed such flights provocative, blaming the U.S. for the tensions between the two countries. U.S. aircraft regularly operate in the South China Sea in support of allies, partners, and a free and open Indo-Pacific. The PCAF statement said, U.S. Pacific Air Force's bombers have flown from Guam for more than a decade as part of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command's continuous bomber presence operations. The region is vital to the international economy, with about 80% of all trade by volume and 70% by value being shipped through the South China Sea, according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. About 14% of U.S. trade transited the area in 2016, according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies China Power Project. China sent about 64% of its trade and Japan sent nearly 42% through the South China Sea the same year. The missions follow the trend of freedom of navigation operations the Navy conducts in the region to challenge what the service calls China's excessive maritime claims. The U.S. disputes China's claim of authority over several islands and reefs in the oil-rich South and East China Seas, including in the Spratly, Parcel and Senkaku Islands, according to the CIA World Factbook. China asserts authority over the 12 nautical miles around their claimed islands and reefs, as well as over the airspace above them. One of the most iconic airplanes of the U.S. Air Force's flying inventory is the A-10 Thunderbolt, also affectionately known as the Warthog. Designed to mow down rows of invading Soviet tanks during an anticipated World War III, the A-10 has served in most of America's post-Cold War conflicts, from the Balkans to Afghanistan. A new Pentagon contract to manufacture new wing Zets promises to keep a minimum of 280 aircraft flying into the foreseeable future, even as questions persist whether the A-10 can survive over modern battlefields. In 1967, the U.S. Air Force initiated the AX program, designed to field a new generation close air support. CAS aircraft. This was the first for the Air Force, which had traditionally used fighters and light bombers, including the A-10's namesake, the P-47 Thunderbolt, in the casserole. Although the Air Force's current stable of fighters, including their famous 100 series planes favored speed above all else, AX traded speed for survivability, maneuverability at low speeds, loiter time and, most importantly, lethality. After a flight off against the Northrop A-9, the Fairchild A-10 was picked and the first jets delivered in 1974.
than Thunderbolt is unlike any fighter before or since, with survivability features designed to keep it flying during an attack run and make it back to base. The plane featured redundant engineering features designed to keep the plane flying though parts of it were shot away. The two General Electric TF-34 non-afterburning turbofans were moved behind the wing in order to reduce the plane's infrared signature and protect it from Soviet air defenses such as the SA-7 Grail shoulder-fired surface-to-air missile system. The A-10 pilot sits in a titanium bathtub protecting him or her from anti-aircraft guns up to 23 mm. The primary armament of the ZSU. 23 to 4 mobile air defense system. The flight control systems and engines are also encased in titanium plate. The A 10 is also designed to be flexible and maneuverable, both in the air and on the ground. The aircraft design stresses maneuverability at slow speed, allowing the pilot to fly extremely low nape of the Earth missions to mask its approach to the enemy and to avoid enemy anti-aircraft fire. The A-10 is also designed to operate from short, unimproved airstrips in the event regular air base airstrips are put out of action. The Thunderbolt 2's best attribute is its armament. The aircraft has 11 external hardpoints for carrying electronic countermeasures, fuel tanks, bombs and missiles. The A-10 can carry up to 24 500-pound bombs, 4 2,000-pound bombs or 6 AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles. This enables the A-10 to carry out a number of frontline missions from close air support to suppression of enemy air defense, and strike key enemy targets such as fuel storage depots, radar installations and field headquarters. The weapon that sets the A-10 apart from the rest of the aircraft world is the nose-mounted GAU-8 A cannon. The large, 7-barreled Gatling gun can fire armor-piercing rounds at up to 4,200 rounds per minute saturating a target area with lethal cannon fire. The GAU-8 A is mounted two degrees nose down and to the left, so that the firing barrel is always on the center line. The GAU-8 A was an effective weapon for strafing Soviet armor units advancing in a single file formation particularly with specially developed tank-killing depleted uranium ammunition. Even armor-piercing ammunition without depleted uranium can penetrate ZSU-23-4 Mobile Air Defense Systems, BTR, 70-wheeled armored personnel carriers and an BMP, two infantry fighting vehicles that made up advancing Soviet motor rifle regiments, all of which could be opened by the GAU-8 A like cans of sardines. Time the A-10 was meant to operate alongside U.S. Army Apache attack helicopters in the so-called Joint Air Attack Team (JAAT) to kill advancing Soviet armor. JAAT doctrine called for Apaches to suppress enemy air defenses, identifying and killing threats to the A-10. A-10s would then swoop down at a 30-degree angle posing down Soviet forces with their Gatling guns. In hindsight, this would not often have worked, as Soviet forces would have advanced too quickly for the inter-service teamwork to stop the enemy in time. The A-10's first war was the 1991 Persian Gulf War, when warthogs were used to kill Iraqi armor units. 132 A-10s flew 7,983 combat missions during the course of the war, killing 987 tanks, 926 artillery pieces, 1,355 armored vehicles, 10 aircraft on the ground and even two flying helicopters shot down with the GAU. 8A. After the Gulf War the Air Force planned to do away with the A-10, 
replacing it with the F-16, but the A-10's success over the battlefield won it a constituency in Congress. In 1999, A-10s flew over Kosovo and NATO's Operation Allied Force, and after 9-11 A-10s flew over both Iraq and Afghanistan. A-10s flying from Min Sirlik Air Base in Turkey have flown missions against ISIS since at least 2014, and in January 2018, A-10s returned to the skies over Afghanistan after a hiatus of several years. The Air Force has tried to retire the A-10 for more than a quarter century. The service has consistently argued that the A-10 cannot survive on the modern battlefield and that A-10 funds are better invested in newer planes such as the F-16 Fighting Falcon, and, now, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Under pressure from the A-10's fans in Congress and the military, the U.S. Air Force is keeping the planes, for now anyway, seeking to manufacture new wings for more than 108-10s. This will ensure that at least 280 aircraft will have the structural improvements necessary to keep a viable force of A-10s in the Air Force's inventory. Is the A-10 viable over today's battlefields? Against low-tech enemies with poor air defense weapons such as ISIS or the Taliban, the A-10 is still a capable platform. Against other, more modern threats such as Russian or Chinese air defenses the A-10 cannot survive on its own. One solution could be to pair the A-10 with air defense suppression drones. Once drones have neutralized the air defense threat, A-10s could conduct standoff attacks, loitering at a safe distance while identifying enemy targets and eliminating them with weapons such as newer versions of the Maverick missile or the small diameter bomb. Strafing runs with the GAU, 8-A would be less common, but the guns would still see some use against undefended, massed targets. The A-10 is one of the most successful weapons of the post-Cold War era, and has won legions of fans both in and outside the armed services. The temptation is to keep the aircraft flying as long as possible. The trick is to keep the plane around only as long as it is relevant to the modern battlefield. If the A-10 can fight and win for the next generation, so be it. If not, it needs to be retired and a better plane, or solution, takes its place. There is no room for sentiment in the battlefield's lethal skies.